Welcome back, kiddies. This is Rocco. Welcome to uh, The Binge. We're here at beautiful Rocket Bar and Grill in downtown Chicago, sitting down with me today. The man, friend of ours, Marty Casey, lead singer of the Love Hammers. Marty, what's going on, man? Thank you for sitting down. Yeah. With, what a ride for you guys this year, man, huh? The whole Love Hammers. Yeah, it's been just, gonna... just about 12 months now of complete insanity and completely world turned upside down. And... Now, what's been the biggest thrill? I mean, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of things you could say, but what's been the biggest thing that kind of sticks out at you? I think the finale of the Rockstar show, really? I would say, was a big one, having, knowing there's like 25 million people watching you. <laughs> but uh, I think the utmost best part was uh, when I looked on some of like the MSN charts, sure. and I saw that for about a month I had like five of the top ten downloaded songs above Kanye, nah. above Madonna, nice. you know, and just having like an original song, Trees, be number one on there for a month. And that was, I knew and I affected somebody. I know, I know people were, you know, it's just so instantaneous. Sure. Like people always say, you know, it, you know, we're, we're an overnight success. We've been working for years and, and you know, we, we want to you know, be respected for that. But I tell you, when it happens, when it actually, when you explode, sure. it is overnight. And it doesn't, you know, yeah, you've worked for all those years, but that's just preparation because when it happens, it's just it like, does happen in two weeks. It just you know, it's you. like you, one day you're walking down the street and, and nobody really knows who you are. And the next day you have all this exposure and, you know, people just Same come way. up, hey, and, oh, you know, right. hey, I know you or how do I know you or <laughs> hey, trees, dude. <laughs> yeah, trees, so, dude. That's good. Now, you said 25 million people just watching. I couldn't even imagine that many people just kind of like focusing in. But do fans uh, react to you differently now? I think old school fans before the show get a little PO'd that there's this new school that's taken up the front row sure. where they were. And because these people are willing to wait six hours to get front row. So they get a little like, they get a little set back. Like they just want to be, they just want us to know and, or be remembered that they were there first. They were there and, first. And, and I do respect that because sure. they have been with us for years. Just and I, try, I don't try to slight them in any way. And, Definitely try to give the most attention to the people that have been around the longest. Sure, but it's kind of hard because you have all these people. Now, where, when you sit down and write, just Marty, where do you get your inspiration from? Is there a certain thing that does it for you? Do you go somewhere? I think the best songs I've ever written were written in just a few hours. Really? They weren't slaved over. They, you know, weren't overly thought through. It's just something that kind of just inspiration. For some reason, I write a lot of great songs in New York. Really? You know, like a lot of songs on this record, for some reason, New York. we're visiting New York City. And is, is there just something about the vibe in New York that does it for you? Or? I think what it is about New York and writing for me is that when you step out on the street, whether you're tired, hungover, you know, just fully energized and sure. ready to take on the day, it doesn't matter. Because once you get kind of, it's like stepping into a, a really, you know, steady flowing stream because everybody's moving so fast and it doesn't matter how you feel that day you just got to step in and then you're, you're swept up in the current of the city wow. so you can definitely find that in downtown chicago kind of in these downtown areas not yeah. the suburb areas yeah, necessarily because you know it's a little more laid back but i like being in those areas like downtown here it's just where like there's so much energy in the street that kind of just gets my mind moving it makes me really visual and looking around and i pick out cool things and then I kind of just try to incorporate while I'm walking around during the day, overhear people's conversations, hear a cool line. Yeah. Um, like a, somebody was talking about the other day, a lifetime supply of ambulance rides. <laughs> you know, and they just ma yeah. made this crazy concept. So then I went home and I'm like, wow, that's a cool concept. Like, want a lifetime supply of ambulance rides. Like, what does that mean? How do you incorporate sure. that into a song? So, so it's just something like that. While the busyness of the city, uh, whether it be Chicago, New York, LA, anywhere, Boston on tour and the tour bus just caught up in that frenetic pace just kind of seems to write the songs for me So just the vibe and just kind of running into people now the show deals a lot with uh, Independent bands showcased uh, be it in Chicago and just cross-country uh, When you were first starting out, how did you get money to do your first like pro record? For the love hammers, it's always been you work your day job and dedicate a portion of that money to the band sure. so it was I mean I, all of us had a vested interest in that we were spending our own hard-earned money on the side for the sake of the band to build the band up. And I think that's why we did so well independently is we could start an independent label and we could tour mm -hmm. and do things. A lot of bands were like, we're broke, man. You know, <laughs> but what do you do all day? Oh, we, just, we hang out, we write songs. And 
that's cool to a degree, and that can happen. Sure. You can make stuff happen like that. But I mean, even you know, you go back to like very successful bands from the past. They've worked and dedicated that money because you just grow so much faster if you got cash flow. Sure, cash is like the answer to everything. So we were weekend warriors. We worked our asses off during the week nice. at regular jobs, and we dedicated all that money to putting on bigger, bigger shows until that point that it took off that we didn't have to work the jobs and you could just focus on music. Well, that's great. Now, what's the toughest thing about keeping a band together? I think for me, like after the show, it's been keeping my head on straight, not thinking I'm, you know, hey, you know, not thinking like you're the man for some reason. There's an, there was a reason Love Hammers kept on growing. And even though there's this instantaneous popularity from being sure. on Rockstar, you got to understand that that's just instantaneous thing. That has nothing to do with made me a musician or made sure. me put this great band together. So it's definitely keeping your head on straight when things do pop for you, like understanding that it's a collection of four guys and it's not all about me yeah because that could easily break up the band uh and the other thing is, for longevity is is like getting over fights because we've been in just some brutal fights and it's <laughs> you almost you, you get so heated in in an argument that it's almost hard to face the person next day really? right or wrong and wow. i think it's just being able like being you know eating that humble pie and walking back in the room and just sucking it sure. up and say what's what's more important you know like is it the band or is it this 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 fight and we try to use the fights to like you know just spark the creativity i don't think we've ever had better shows than we went on stage after just you know taking swings at each other <laughs> so then there's just this insane energy <laughs> to, it, to the know. show because you're literally fighting it out with music wow and so get a whole bunch of creative people in one room and just like the sparks fly i mean i hear that all the time now, uh, with Love Hammers, was there ever a breaking point for you guys? Was there ever like a moment in time when you thought, you know what, maybe it's just time to go back to the day jobs? I mean, music is great, but it's just, was there ever a breaking point for you guys? I think the beginning of last year, uh, the beginning of 2005, January, I was pretty much, and I was starting to talk to my friends about what about the possibility of uh, not pursuing music anymore and just be, people being soundboards like, man, I've been doing it for so long and it just hasn't broken and there's, we've done so much. And it, it, it's kept on building, but I just felt like, I felt like everything was about to take a bad turn. Really? Like I felt like the band, we were all getting a little tired. Sure. We've been climbing, pushing that rock up the hill for so long and just watching it roll down and pushing it up again and pushing it up again. And I really thought last January that it was, it was going to be over. And I was ready to like check out and just move somewhere or do something else. And then this just kind of took off for you. And then I think it's when you're at your weakest. It's when you, you know, it's when that, there was that little spark wow. that was just enough. And I think I was at that point, it was the only reason I ever tried out for Rockstar. Really? I think it was just because I was like, what are we going to do now? We've charted independently. <laughs> we've toured. We've done this, but we just couldn't break. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was cool and it was building, you know, five people at a time, ten people at a time, but at this point we wanted something massive. Sure. And I think what we wanted and where we were, there was no connection to ever make that happen. Wow. I thought at that point. And for some reason this little show came along and it was this little idea of a show. It wasn't even they didn't even have it figured out yet. Wow. And so once I, I once I tried out, I was hooked and I'm like, this is it this is the thing that's going to take us over the top and you knew and the band didn't think it they're like this is going to ruin us really this is you know you're going to go off on your own or or this show's going to suck and people aren't going to take <laughs> you seriously so it was a big risk taking on the show but i've never felt i've personally never felt more right doing th something that everybody else thought was wrong wow. it was the only time in my life i'm very like a lot of times like if a lot of people are are negative to an idea i might you know, put it on the back burner. Sure. But this is one idea everybody said, don't do it. And I said, that's exactly the reason I'm going to do it. Wow. So you just knew something was going to happen and you just felt it and just roll with it, man. That's I awesome. knew it. Once I auditioned, I knew, I'm like, nothing's going to stop me from getting on this show. That's and I'm incredible. like, there's nobody, nobody that can do what I do. That's what I felt. There's nobody that can, I thought it was about the performance. There's nobody that can front a band like I could front a band, I thought. That's awesome. I thought I could blow people's minds that sure. way. 
And I just had so much stage experience. I'm like, who are they going to find with this much experience? You know, from, <laughs> from the small scale to the, to the big scale. Like I've done, you know, from performing for two people at a dive bar burrito joint <laughs> on a Tuesday night yeah. to, you know, getting an open for like, you know, Puddle of Mud or Nickelback or Jerry Cantrell in front of 20,000. Wow. So I felt they had the range to be able to do it. And, and there was nothing was going to stop me from getting on that show. Now, the smaller venues as compared to the, to the bigger uh, venues, is there, do you change your performance when it comes, uh, if you're in an intimate setting, say somewhere here like Martyrs, for instance, uh, or the Double Door, and then you get like a big arena. Is there a difference in performance? Do you prepare differently for? Well, there's definitely differences in your type of performance because a move like this in a small club makes sense. But if you're at, you know, a 30,000 seater, yeah. That the same move's got to look like this because nobody can see this. So I mean, it's definitely you have to kind of put on a bigger show. Your my reactions have to be bigger. Sure. You know, if you're if you're you know, if you're moshing your head at a small venue and there's ten people there, then you got to be doing backflips in an arena because, <laughs> you know, there's not the big screens all the time. You yeah. have to let the people, you know, you know, attendee number thirty thousand that's in the back of the lawn. You want to put on no. a show. You're not going to stand there and do that. But I, I'd say that the one thing that's been really good for the Love Hammers is taking the shows where there's four people there really seriously yeah. and trying to knock them out. And it's really hard because yeah. there's four of them. You know, it's easier to play for 30,000 than it is for four, believe really? it or not. Wow. But when you turn it on for four, the next time you come, you know there's going to be 20 because they say, there's this crazy band, nobody was there. They're unbelievable. you got to come check them out. And they think they found something special because they figured it out nobody else was there and they come back and it's how we built it and you know detroit or st louis or these indianapolis other markets is like we showed up the first time there was 10 people there but you know you go back third fourth time you got 100 200 people in the house and you actually got something going on and you rock it out which is great and it's kind of leading to my next question the independent scene uh in general just in chicago has it changed from when you guys first came up like today as opposed to maybe like five six years ago I think the independent scene is constantly changing. Really? It's like a dynamic group because bands come in and bands come out. Styles come in and styles go out. But I think the cool thing about being an independent band is like, w what you do and what you're developing, it doesn't ever, you don't have to change it if you don't want. You can oh. grow, but you don't necessarily have to change. Like, I think Love Hammers we're very successful in Chicago, but I think our genre of music being modern rock wasn't, it's not like people said, oh, there's this cool new indie band that's just like new Sonic Youth or something. We didn't have cred. Yeah. And we never depended on cred. What we depended on is, you know, creating a massive group of people that wanted to see the band live and wanted to support the band and wanted to come to our parties. Sure. So I think the cool thing about being independent is that you can truly be any style that you want and you can grow as long as you stay together and you find people f you'll find the people that like what you do yeah if you just go out there and expect to find it in six weeks it ain't going to happen yeah. or if you expect to be something that's like already out there it ain't going to happen but if you just consistently be true to who you are you know you can grow and change your style or your sound but people you'll find the people that dig your style of music well. you know we started out with a small fan base and we found these people that liked you know, uh, modern rock with almost the ta taste of like Guns N' Roses in there or something. And a lot of people just pass that off as, oh, you know, it's yeah. that that was so that wasn't that's not cool today. But I look now and I see that's exactly what's coming back. Yeah, is putting things over the top. Anything worth doing is worth overdoing for us. Sure. You know, it's if if you're gonna if you're gonna be colorful, it'd be way way more colorful than, than people expect. And if you're gonna be energized on stage, then be way over the top.